Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Infor. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to the Big Apple, everybody. Jeff Abbott is here, the Senior Vice President of the Infor Partner Network. We're talking ecosystem with Jeff. Jeff, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. So, we look around, uh, great show this year. Up, attendance looks like it's up from New Orleans. Oh, uh, no doubt. Right? For, quite significantly. Yep. You know, maybe you've built up a lot of pent-up demand because you go every other year. Of course, New York City helps as well. But uh, at any rate, how's the show going so far? What, what, what's happening Lots out there? of excitement on the floor, guys. We're, you know, we're, we actually, to your point about attendance, we've, we've had greater and greater uh, partner involvement in the show. And this is a, is a record breaker for us in terms of partner involvement, the number of sponsors that are here that are partners. And they're bringing a tremendous amount of their customers to the show for the reasons you've probably already mentioned this morning, just the transformation that Infor is taking its customers through, uh, and partners have seen opportunities that they've never seen before from any vendor in this field. So talk about that whole you know, dynamic a little bit, because Infor is different. You're, you're all cloud, you know, is this your strategy? So there's not a bunch of plumbing that the partners can you know, pick off. Um, no mods is your sort right. of mantra. Right. So the big SIs, <laughs> you think ERP and SAP and all the you know, recurring revenue from that. So what's an Infor partner like? What are you looking for? What are they looking for? Describe that. Yeah, great question. So we have kind of two big communities. We have the systems integrators, which in the last three or four years, we've, we've done a lot of work to bring in relationships like Accenture and Deloitte and Cyber and AVAP. Mm -hmm. And these are, are your go-to-market partners that essentially align with our field sales organization, uh, introduce us into accounts that they already have relationships in, and we win business together. We, we create transformation strategies together in the market. And you're right, you know, all cloud has been an intimidating factor for them, uh, especially in the last few years, but they found a way with us to uh, transform their businesses just like we are, right? And they found ways to essentially create cloud value, right, for their customers. And uh, going to market together has been great because as we've learned and transformed our business in the cloud, so too we have this ecosystems of services partners going with us and, and understanding the, the change that customers are going through and the value they can add. Then on the other end of the market, in the, in the SMB, the small and medium business market, we have over 750 channel partner resellers around the world. Again, same transition guys, they're, they're learning uh, very quickly on how to do the no mods, the turnkey implementations and so on, and create value by uh, presenting a solution in the cloud. Uh, so, you know, 1,500 partners total, all of us learning together what this transition to, to cloud is all about, but finding the value spots along the way. And now, so that's interesting, you talk about the service partners, at the same time, uh, Charles this morning was talking about to put up some slides on how much you've invested in, in yeah. services. Yeah. So how do you walk that fine line? What's the message to partners? It is a fine line. We're offering a lot of the latest opportunities in the market, whether it's industries or solutions, to the partner community first. Uh, so well, Stefan will meet with uh, our, our top flight services partners and our alliance partners and suggest, why don't you expand into the Middle East or parts of Southeast Asia or parts of uh, Eastern Europe? Uh, our solutions are growing there, and in a lot of cases they are. They're opening new offices, they're creating new practices on our latest solutions and so on. But, you know, we still have to service those, those customers where we don't have the same strength in the Alliance Partner community. So, you know, I, I have a giant kind of wall map that shows our coverage model for the Alliance Partner community by industry and by solution. And where we have those gaps, you know, Darren and his team are, are filling them in by hiring and training their own people. So we love the, the whole ecosystem play. You've seen so many companies leverage it. I mean, VMware is a classic example. You know, Todd Nielsen, former president of VMware, used to throw out a stat, for every dollar spent on a VMware license, 13 is spent on the ecosystem solutions, and that rose to 15 and then 18, and you could see the ecosystem growing. My question, Jeff, is what about innovation that comes from the ecosystem? You guys talked a lot about uh, investments you're making, right. can you get, and how do you get a multiplier effect from the ecosystem? Uh, great question, and that's something that we actually pride ourselves as a, as a differentiation in the market. You know, I like to say that your ecosystem is one of the last strategic competitive advantages in enterprise software, and we believe that's true. So we have to present those opportunities for them to 
expand our solutions, to innovate, and to grow. So things like our, our development platform, Mongoose. On this platform, we invite our channel partners to go into micro verticals. I'm not talking about just auto, but automotive aftermarket parts, very specific uh, uh, micro vertical industries where they can then add their own intellectual property, their own content to our reporting, pre-populate business intelligence reports and so on, and then perhaps even develop their own extensions on our solutions uh, and build out next generation software right there for the customer. Out of the box. Correct. And we're actually going put to put a marketplace in place where they can post their extensions so any customer in the world that happens to be in that micro vertical can leverage it. So that's our strategy, is to grant a kind of a landscape to both alliance partners and channel partners to innovate freely. Are those, are those partners who are building um, essentially, uh, I mean, in, if you're thinking about it in uh, consumer phone terms, it's almost like a new skin. Right. Um, are they also the ones who do the um, sort of implementation, configuration work, or you know, when it's a cloud product, they, um, the activities change. They do. Talk about how that, how a partner's sort of business had to change, what we were talking about earlier, from when it was purely an on-premises product to a cloud product or, or a hybrid. Yeah, great point, George. So, actually I'll give you a very specific example. We have an excellent partner in North America, Copley, who decided, you know what, uh, we like where your cloud suite product is for med device, but we think we can do even better with it. So, Copley has built some extensions specifically for medical device, that sub-industry, that extends the reporting and extends the functionality, creates uh, real specific value in that industry, value that speaks directly to those customers. And at the same time, they've retrained their own services organization on what it means to implement in the cloud and what it means to pre-populate those reports and so on. So, as you said earlier, Dave, out of the box, those customers get the content they want, the reporting they want, and, and all the while, to your question, George, about what a, what a channel partner does, that partner escorts them through the transformation. So uh, all the demos, all the discovery on what business value they're trying to create through the sales process and the implementation and support. So our channel partners are full service partners. They do all of the selling, implementing, and a lot of them long-term support of the customer. When you say long-term support, like, in the older on-premises era, that, that would include you know, the patching, the maintenance, the security, yep. upgrades. Um, but what does that look like, like now? Yeah, yeah that, so that has changed, right? Whereas uh, those same partners were, were kind of uh, visiting the customer on site all the time, it's been less so now that they're transitioning to the cloud. It's been more remote. Remote implementations, data migrations, and tuning of the solution. But they're still business advisors. Right? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I want to key off that business advisor com comment because it, it sounds like um, even though there's a role, you know, there's transition from the on-premise role to the sort of cloud provider role, but it sounds like the skills involved in the partner are very, very different. They are. And so, whereas the entity, the partner entity can make the transition, not all the people there can. So funny you say that. So the, this morning I, I have uh, held about 10 partner meetings so far, a lot more to come. Uh, but in each and every one of those discussions, we're having that hard conversation about the transition of your staff and the transition of your business model and your mentality. Right. So between uh, Infor and all of our partners, we create a mutual business plan, right? So that, and that's important so that they understand where our products are going, where our overall strategy is going, but it's equally important so that our customers have a level of confidence that I'm transitioning the best knowledge I have available on what a cloud transformation looks like to my partners. And one of the, the top challenges they have is bringing in that, call it millennial level talent of folks who, who don't remember client server and who don't remember uh, you know, the historic side of, of enterprise software right. and more so are used to, no, 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 it should be turnkey, I should be able to just uh, uh, you know, log in in the cloud, have what I need, where I want it, and if I want to change the configuration, partners have to adopt that mentality. They have to, they have to pick up the talent that understands that that's the industry we're now in. Well, a lot of companies, software companies, are looking at the cloud and saying, oh, hey, we can claw back some of the channel. We can cut out the middleman. Ah, oh, cloud's simple. We can, you know, 
take some of those millennials, put them on the phone, hire some athletes out of, you know, whatever, you know, San Jose State, and put them <laughs> on the phone and go crazy. Um, you're taking a different approach. We are. Contrast that your the Infor philosophy. With yeah, no. What I just uh, some news just last week. One of our major competitors decided they're going to wipe out a big portion of their their partner organization in favor of an inside sales model. Which I, you know, good luck to them. Uh, it's more than just picking up the phone and making contact with with a customer and explaining what the solution does. The value in a channel community, the value in a partner ecosystem overall is extending the knowledge that a vendor provides and extending uh, the capabilities that we provide. So there's, you know, to me, I, can't, I just can't imagine, uh, you know, a, a company trusting. Uh, IROX. <laughs> Didn't want to say it, but I would say it for you. IROX? You know what IROC stands for? He knows. <laughs> Go Idi ahead. Idiot right out of college. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> you guys can say that. <laughs> But, but exactly, you know, somebody who who's doesn't have any experience in the industry, does, can't speak the language, and, and then the first question they get kind of you know, goes, hold on a minute, and they're flipping through their script trying to find the answer. <laughs> just doesn't work, right? And that's the value, again, that's why I think a, a competent ecosystem is a differentiator. Because you can provide the value, you have the experience, you've been there, done that, and you can give you know, customers who are putting down a lot of money to transform confidence that they're doing it the right way. Oh, to be an IROC again, this is the best time of your life, <laughs> by the way. Um, support for partners, what do you guys do? You know, pitch me, I'm a, I'm a potential partner, what's in it for me? Well, first of all, for, for anyone who's interested, Wednesday, we're kicking off the Partner Summit here in New York, very excited about that. Uh, but we constructed the Infor Partner Network program about five years ago, and it's mm -hmm. now a four-time five-star channel program or partner ecosystem program by CRN, uh, Channel Reseller News. Yeah. So we're really proud of that because uh, that means that we are a, a, a top flight enablement program for our partner community. And that's the name of the game with a partner community is enablement, right? Making sure that they're getting the proper training, the proper access, uh, that we've got uh, the right portals in place for them to self-service, gather the product roadmaps, to gather all of the online training, uh, and you know, what I say to a, a new prospective partner, and we're recruiting new partners all the time, I think we have 1,500 now, I think we could easily have 2,000 in the next two or three years. What I say to them is, listen, um, you bring the knowledge, we bring the enablement, we will put people around you to, to get you started, to help make you successful, um, and that's what we do, right? So uh, unlike a lot of our competitors who will take, for example, uh, a market, and they'll pile 15, 20, 50 partners in the same market and say, go at it. We don't do that. We're, we're uh, intimate with our partners. We uh, select very few, but we try to select the highest quality partners, and we make them successful with direct relationships in either channel or alliance management, uh, enablement liaisons. We do conferences like this every year where we invest a lot of money to make sure they're getting access to the best of info. So there's some degree of exclusivity, I don't want to say exclusive, but there's a quasi-exclusive, a selective uh, process. It's a good way to put it. It's, I would say it's a very selective. Not exclusive, but very selective. Uh, customers still have choice, right, uh, amongst both our alliances and our channel community, but we do put a lot of investment to make sure that it, no matter who the partner, they're highly competent, highly trained, uh, and they're, they're proven. So uh, again, think of it this way. If when you uh, walk in and you're, you're evaluating a new car, right, a lot of times six guys jump you at the same time, right? Nobody likes that, right? That's not us. What we do is put a knowledgeable person in front of you that knows already the kind of car you might be interested in and has already done their research and their homework to make sure that they're presenting the best possible solution for your need. Have, have you guys um, sort of figured out a bracket for the, comp the size of, of the company customer uh, that you can go after with your channel model, and like how would that stack up with, I don't know, NetSuite, or even SAP or Oracle, if they could possibly reach that far? Yeah, our, our, our segmentation is very clear and transparent. So essentially, uh, for new prospects, or new uh, companies interested in Infor Solutions, all custom, customers $75 million in annual revenue and below, that's the market that our channel community serves. Now, uh, companies 75 million to 500 million, we kind of call that a, a coexist zone. 
and that's where either a, a direct sales rep or a channel partner can serve the account. Depends on where the relationship is and who's got the experience and so on. But we, we create that transparent segmentation, George, because number one, customers want to know what's the coverage model. Uh, but number two, we're trying to minimize channel conflict. We don't, I really don't want to have a, a direct sales organization presenting at the same time with channel partners. It doesn't make sense, it's not efficient. So that, uh, that works well for us. Compared to our competition, uh, I think we've actually maintained a very steady segmentation model where when I look, our competition's kind of all over the road. Like we were saying, some are now abandoning their partner communities altogether in favor of an inside sales model. Uh, some you know, kind of flip-flop the, the, those segmentation lines every year. Uh, but we've remained very steady. In fact, those, that segmentation I've talked about has been the same it's been for at least five or six years now. It works very well. You gave an example earlier, Jeff, of a, of a customer actually say, hey, we can improve upon you know, this functionality and, and develop some, some additional capabilities. What about the developer world? Uh, I haven't heard much about the platform, Infor as a platform yeah. that you're going to open up to the world. Is that something that's in the work? How, how, where do the developers play? Yeah, no, great question. So, uh, like an ISV community, right? An independent solution vendor uh, community. It's not something we've had in the past. We do have solution partnerships, and a lot of them are here and sponsoring, right. and they're great solutions. Uh, but we are pressing to do more of what you're describing, Dave. We, are, we think that uh, there is, with the, with the advancement of the solutions and, and kind of us now uh, taking all of them to the cloud, there's an opportunity to create a community of developers who you know, on their own build extensions and solutions either in the vertical sense or in the solution sense. Uh, so it's something that we're just getting started. Don't really have an announcement about it, but we do have a, pl a platform. The Mongoose platform was built for exactly that. Right, and so but you can't take that lightly. So but you've got, the, the key thing I'm hearing is you've got the tech, yeah. and, and now you need a, a business infrastructure to support that, Correct. and there's a whole new marketing initiative. And a marketplace. And, yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. So, so stay so tuned. It's on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else is on the horizon? Where should, what should we be paying attention to in terms of the ecosystem? Things that we should be watching in terms of indicators of success and growth? Yeah, great question. So I would say, uh, you know, when I'm on stage on Wednesday and presenting to my, to my partner community, I'm going to show them a couple of really, really encouraging graphs. Number one, we have a steep up and to the right graph on cloud adoption in the, in the channel partner community. It's not been an easy transition for them like we discussed, but they are adopting cloud. And, and I would say uh, one out of every four or five deals now in the channel community is a cloud deal. And that might not, might not sound like much, but it's accelerating. Um, on the alliances side, I'd say uh, you know, one or two out of every five opportunities our, our direct sales force is working on is with a partner. Mm -hmm. So in total now, one out of every three deals is, is a partner's engaged. So we're seeing, and that's what we want. We want the ecosystem to be very active in the growth of the company. Um, so for example, channel accounts for 20% of the company's current uh, sales growth, uh, or overall sales target. And, uh, and in the alliances side, again, one out of every five direct deals sold by a direct rep is included in alliance partner, and that's increasing. So I think if we met a year from now, those numbers might even, you know, not double, but they'll be well, but up and to the right. So much leverage, so yep. much coverage, you know, and you know, to talk about overseas opportunities yep. as well. I mean, it's, to me, it's critical. Yep. Critical part of a company's growth strategy for a $3 billion company that wants to be a $20 billion company. And customers, you, they want that. They want a healthy ecosystem, especially the multinationals who say, that's great, you've got excellent services here in the United States, but I have locations in Japan and Singapore mm -hmm. and uh, Australia, New Zealand. I need a, a, a kind of a full services package and that's where the ecosystem's critical. We're up against the clock, but go ahead. A quick question. Um, Dave brought up the topic of how about platform as ecosystem, and I was thinking about GT Nexus, how about network as mm. ecosystem. Mm. What is that, I mean, that allows you to think of much broader deals, it might does. be harder to sell, um, you know, or more of a, a senior level sell, but it's a very different game. It is, and, and the GT Nexus team has done a phenomenal job of creating alliance relationships for that exact reason. They've got uh, systems integrator relationships at the highest level across uh, several different industries, including automotive, some in retail, et cetera, whereby uh, those partners are essentially advising their clients, this is the right platform for you to drop in uh, 
your supply chain and your needs from suppliers uh, all the way through to distributors and, and end use uh, uh, customers to create transparency across the entire vertical as Charles discussed on stage this morning. So those uh, alliance uh, partner communities are seeing the value of a GT Nexus. It's actually, you know, I remember in the late 90s, everybody thought we could create all of these super networks and so on. GT Nexus is one of the only companies I've ever seen that's pulled it off, right? And gotten a, a tremendous amount of liquidity on that platform, and the big SIs are, all see it and they're advising their clients to get on it. Excellent. Yeah. All right, Infor, investing in its ecosystem, bringing innovation, of course, we're bringing content to our ecosystem with theCUBE. Jeff Abbott, thanks very much for coming on. Thanks, Dave. All right, keep it right nice there, everybody. You. We'll be back to the Big Apple right after this word.